Exodus chapter 14, verse number 15. Just one verse for you today, but it is power-packed. God said to Moses, why are you crying? Move forward. My God. Why are you crying? Why are you praying? Stop praying and get moving. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't stop praying. What God is suggesting in this passage is pray and do. Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people of Israel to move forward. Father, thank you for your word. And I pray, Lord, that you would, in fact, speak to us today. Speak, Lord. Open our ears to hear what you would say. Open our hearts, God, to receive your word, Lord, and move us forward. Come on, say, move me forward, God. Move my family forward, God. Move this church forward, God, in Jesus' name. There's three options, church, when it comes to movement. Three options. There's backward. There's stationary. And there's forward. Reverse is good if you're backing your car out of your parking stall, but driving backwards is dangerous and it's illegal. (laughs) And church, let me tell you, God did not intend for us to live our lives going in reverse, living stuck in the past. Move forward. The past is the past. We have to move forward. Stationary is good if you're at a red light. In fact, if you keep moving forward at a red light, you're going to get a ticket. And when you get a ticket in SoCal, you know you've gotten a ticket. It's not like like getting one in central Indiana. See what I did there? All right, I'll say it. Terre Haute. Thank you. Sorry, Matt. I can't resist it. I can't help myself. It's $500. I think I'll stop. Church, there are times in our lives when God wants us stationary. He speaks to us and says, be still. He tells us to rest. He tells us to wait on Him. But ultimately, God wants us moving forward. As I prayed about 2022, I sensed the Lord speaking a word for us. I pray, God, give us a word. Every year, I'm, I'm, I'm asking God and praying, God, give us a word. The Lord said it's time to accelerate. The word that God gave me for our church for 2022, accelerate. That's a power-packed word, actually. Accelerate. And I believe 2022 is going to be a year of acceleration for us. For you personally, for your marriage, any marriage that's stalled and stuck, It's the year for acceleration. Maybe for your home, for your business, for your finances. But I believe it's for this church. Accelerate. So what do I mean when I say the word accelerate? Well, some may imagine slamming on the accelerator. Your vehicle has a a brake and an accelerator. You slam on the accelerator and then you're, you're really zooming through life. Well, that's not really what I'm suggesting necessarily. I, I think the speed is up to God. I believe this is going to be a year of development, of advancement, of progress. This is going to be a year of forward motion. We're not going backwards. We're not staying stationary. We're moving forward as God accelerates us. 
Now, the thing about me pro proclaiming a word for this house and a pro proclaiming a word for you, you can either latch on to the word or you can be skeptical of the word. If you're skeptical of the word, it's going to be hard for you to accelerate with us. So I encourage you, latch on to the word. And allow God to do what God does at his pace. I just don't want you stuck. I don't want you going backwards for sure. And I will help you and you'll help me, Bree. We're going to move forward. Come on, tell me I'm moving forward. Yeah, you are. So am I. Together we're going to do it. Come on, church. Are you ready? Mark, are you ready? Are you ready? Come on, are, we, are you ready to move forward? Are you ready for God to accelerate us? My God. For two years, individuals, families, businesses, and our nation, our world, in fact, has been stalled out on the side of the road, paralyzed by panic, frozen in fear, and dominated by doubt. Now it's time to accelerate. Now it's time to move forward. And as you move forward... Keep this in mind. You will always be moving from something. You will always be moving through something. And you'll always be moving to something. Always. Here's God's chosen people. They've finally been released from Egypt. And they are moving forward out of bondage. And what happens? Boom. Here's another challenge. Here's another obstacle. Pastor Elliot talked about obstacles last week. If you didn't hear Elliot last week, you need to watch that. It was so awesome, so powerful. They're moving forward out of Egypt, out of bondage, hallelujah, out of slavery. And they come to the Red Sea. They come to an impasse. They face an impossibility, at least for them. The Red Sea is before them. The enemy is behind them. What do you do? <laughs> well, you cry out to God. God, help me. But I love God's response. Can you bring that scripture back up for me? God said, quit crying and get moving. That's just a word for us today, church. Quit crying and stop moving. Move forward and watch what I will do as you step out in faith. And you might say, well, hey, I, I can't. There's no way. Oh, that's when God gets good. You see, God still makes a way where there seems to be no way. It just looks like there's no way. But if God says to move forward, then you need to move forward. And you need to step out in faith and watch what God will do. Because as long as you are stationary, as long as you are moving backwards, you will never see what God is about to do unless you step out in faith. Come on, somebody say, move forward. I'm going to move forward. Thank you, Lord. Even under impossible circumstances, God commanded them to move forward. And His command for them is His command for us today. So what are we moving forward from? Let's start there. Let's start this conversation looking at what we're moving from. You'll always be moving from something. You'll always be moving through something. And you're always going to be moving to something. So we start by looking what we're moving from. Move forward from the pain of your past. And I don't care who you are and how long you've been serving the Lord. Everybody has a past and everybody's past has some pain in it. Their past was filled with pain. And their past had a name. Egypt. Egypt. Egypt represented multiple levels and multiple layers of pain. They were actually in physical pain. They were slaves, remember? The Israelites, God's chosen people, because of 
disobedience, it led them to be captured. They found themselves in bondage, and they were slaves against their will for many, many years, by the way. Slaves. But God still blessed them, and God still multiplied them. Aren't you thankful that God will still come and bless you even though you make some knuckle-headed mistakes? Am I the only one here that's made some knuckle-headed mistakes and God still pours out His blessing? God still pours out His guidance? God still pours out His anointing? Thank you, God. But there's consequences to my knuckle-headed mistakes. They were in bondage because of disobedience and they were held as slaves, but God kept meeting them. God kept blessing them. God kept multiplying them. And Pharaoh, Pharaoh feared that they would multiply so much that they would overthrow him and overthrow his people. Look at this in verse number, uh, verse number 9 of chapter 1. Pharaoh said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel, they're just too many. They're too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply. And if war breaks out, they might join our enemies and fight against us. And then they will escape from the land and they will find their freedom. Therefore, set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for Pharaoh store cities. Python and Ramses. But the more they were oppressed, get this today, La Palma Christian Center, the more that they were oppressed, the more that they were blessed. The more that they were oppressed, the more that they multiplied, and the more that they spread abroad. You can't stop the blessing of God in your life. And the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. You know, this word afflicted, they were beaten. They were beaten with whips for no cause other than they were God's chosen people. And they were beaten. They were in absolute physical pain. Things happened to them that shouldn't have happened to them, just like you, perhaps. There are people in here, if we pass the microphone around, our, our mouths would drop in, in horror at what has happened to them that should have never happened to them. But God's plan is not for you to stay stuck in the past, even a painful past. God's plan for you, this is for somebody today. God's plan is for you to move forward. And God says, I'm going to accelerate you past your painful past this year. Physical pain. What about the emotional pain? They had absolute physical pain, but they also had a good deal of emotional pain. You see, the fact that they were slaves and held in bondage against their will, that caused great emotional suffering. I don't want to do uh, the things that you're commanding me to do, mandating me to do against my will. And these taskmasters would just play mind games with them. They would make them... Uh, they would make them do tasks that had no end result. It was for no reason other than just to keep them busy. Then they would say, oh, well, that's not good enough. You've got to start over. And by the way, let me just keep on beating you. I mean, imagine the, 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 the headspace here. They would play with their emotions, making them work for meaningless results, increasing their workload, but de decreasing their supplies. The threat of being beaten was always on their minds. And there was a level of spiritual pain that they went through as well. The spiritual pain. You see, they were God's people. And they longed to worship their God, Jehovah God, Yahweh God. But because they were slaves in Egypt, their worship was restricted. They wanted to go and worship. And when they wanted to go, they would increase their load. Well, as long as you get all this, all this work done, they would say, we're done. Oh, no, we're going to increase the, the workload. They, they could never get there. 
Or Pharaoh would say he was going to allow them to worship and to sacrifice. And then at the very last minute, they're all ready to go. They got the jackets on. The, you know, they got the, all the kids gathered together. They got a snack to take out. I don't know. And then he'd say, never mind. I, I'm not going to let you go. Which goes to the emotional distress again. Still getting beaten. I mean, there's some real pain here, folks. And as I encourage you today to allow God to accelerate his plan in your life, as I encourage you today to move forward, I am not for one moment minimizing the pain of your past. I know that what has happened is real and hurtful. I just want you to move forward free from the guilt The shame, the embarrassment. Move forward from the pain of the past. You'll always be moving forward from something. But let me let me just remind you, you'll always be moving forward through something. Number two, what are we going to move through? Well, we just have to move forward through the trials of today. I want you to write that down. I want to remind you today that there are trials today and we just have to keep moving. (laughs) I mean, it's one thing to move past your past, hallelujah, but then there's today to deal with. Because today's not perfect, is it? But God is with us today. He promised He wouldn't... He would never leave us. He would never forsake us. He said, I'll be with you always. I'll be with you today. And when you face trials, I'll be with you. You see, there's going to be obstacles that arise, even though the Lord brings you through one trial, there's something else down the road. How many that's been your experience in life? Sometimes they back up so fast together and they're stacked up so close together. You think, oh, God, you just you just answered that prayer that I've been praying for so long, and now I've got another struggle ahead of me. I was hoping to catch my breath. Sometimes God says, you know what? I know what I'm doing. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show myself strong again back to back in your life. I, I, you know, God is God and God is sovereign. Which means, you know, We don't always understand his ways, but his ways are perfect and he doesn't make mistakes. We just have to trust when the trials come every day. Uh, I I like what Elliot reminded uh, us of last week. He said every obstacle is an opportunity. Every obstacle that comes your way is an opportunity for God to show his power and create a moment which leads to a monument, which leads to a movement. And then guess what? Here's another obstacle. Yeah, but didn't God do it before? Can't God do it again? Didn't God do it before? Won't God do it again? I mean, they're they're finally free from slavery. What a moment in their life. They're no longer slaves. They're no longer held in bondage. Hallelujah. Let's go. And then they come to a Red Sea that they can't get past. Really, God? Really? An obstacle. Another obstacle. Can you imagine? If you're looking for obstacle-free living, tell me when you find it here on earth. Because I haven't found that on earth. Obstacle-free living is in heaven. Anybody going to heaven? Come on, church, talk to me a little bit today. Anybody made reservations? Anybody made previous plans? I'm going to heaven. It's an obstacle-free living. It's a trial-free area and zone. Hallelujah. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. It's a land of fruit like we've never known before. A promised land. What are the trials of today? Well, what trials did they have to continue to face? Fear is one. 
fear. Look at verse number 10. It says, the people of God feared greatly. When Pharaoh drew near, well, what's, what this is talking about is God has opened up the sea now, and they're passing on dry, on dry land, believe it or not, not even mud on the shoes. Pharaoh said one thing and then did another. He played head games with them so often. Yeah, I'll let them go. Yeah, I'll let them go. All these plagues they had to uh, endure. And, and finally, he, he really lets them go. And he says, well, I changed my mind. I do want them as slaves. I'm going to go get them. So what did that do? The pursuit of the enemy caused fear, of course. The pursuit of the enemy will always cause fear. And the enemy is always pursuing. So we have a bit of a dilemma here. Because I can tell you as your pastor, you should not fear. You're like, I didn't ask for this. I don't want to fear. One of the worst things that's happened through this pandemic is the, the level of fear in people's lives. I mean, it's one thing for people who don't know God, who don't know Jesus and don't have a relationship with Jesus. But that's not you and that's not me. I'm so saddened by how many Christ followers have been paralyzed by fear. Fear is one of those things we will just always have to deal with, church. So when fear comes, remember these three things. I want you to write them down. They're not going to be on your screen. Remember these three things. First of all, it didn't come from God. Well, that's a good thing to remember right there. Fear's going to come. I mean, we're, we're, we're just in a society where lots of people... Uh, are dealing with fear, our government and our, 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 the media, they promote things that, that conjure fear. Not trying to get political right here, I'm just telling you the truth. When fear comes, know first of all, that's not of God. God didn't give me that. So automatically there's some defense, right? There's some weaponry that we have. God didn't give me this. The second thing I want you to remember when fear comes, and it's coming. Remember what God did give you in place of fear. Could somebody help me here today? Let me just quiz you on your Sunday school learning. Let me quiz you on your Bible knowledge here today. Does anybody know what God did give us in place of fear? He said, I didn't give you a spirit of fear. What did he tell us he gave us? He said, I gave you a, a spirit of power, of love. And a sound mind. Come on, somebody put your hand on your head and said, God has given me a sound mind. Just because the enemy plants inappropriate thoughts in your mind does not mean they have to stay. You evict those thoughts. You take your thoughts captive in the name of Jesus. And by the power of his word, inappropriate thoughts are going to come. That's what the enemy does. God didn't give me a spirit of fear, and when the inappropriate thoughts come, they're not staying. He gave me a spirit of love, of power, and a sound mind. Hallelujah. And I'm going to think about the right things. I'm going to think about things that are excellent, things that are lovely. I'm going to think, think about things that are, are, are praiseworthy. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, 8. You can decide what you're going to think about. The third thing I want you to remember when fear comes. First of all, it didn't come from God. Secondly, what God did give you, a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. And the third thing, cast it on the Lord. Why are you carrying it? Why are you carrying and grappling with fear? You know it's not of God. Cast it on the Lord. By the way, uh, the scripture that I referenced before, I didn't put it up on the screen. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. That's 2 Timothy 1.7. Some of y'all taking notes. 2 Timothy 1.7. Now this one, 1 Peter 5.7. 1 Peter 5.7. Cast 
all your care on the Lord. Which includes fear. Fear is a care. And we need to cast that on the Lord. When fear comes, that should just be a signal for us. It's not of God. And God gave me some things, some weaponry to combat fear. And I'm going to release this. I'm going to cast it on the Lord. You might have to do it every day. You might have to do it multiple times every day. But you keep doing it. And you keep fighting the Lord. And you'll see him raise you above this. Say it again. First Peter, yes. First Peter 5, 7. 5, 7. Woo! How many are enjoying the word of the Lord today? We're moving through some trials today. What are the trials that we have to move through? There's the trial of fear. There's the trial of, well, complaint. Complaining. Ooh. Jesus helped me to say this right. Look at what the people said to Moses. Verse 11. Was it because there was no graves in Egypt that you brought us out into the desert to die in the wilderness? But the graves just all full up. Or the cemeteries all just filled up. You're going to bring us out here to the edge of the, the water to die? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in the wilderness. My God. Complaining against Moses cost them dearly. It cost them dearly. What should have been an 11 day journey ended up being a 40 year journey because of complaining, doubt, fear, disobedience. Hmm. I'll just say this and let me move on. There's so much I want to say, but I, I feel like the Holy Spirit's already saying what needs to be said. Let me encourage you, church, don't let the thoughts and words of others stifle or stall you. Move forward past the complaining. Moses wasn't a perfect man. Well, let me say it like this. Moses was a man. And he wasn't perfect. I'm not perfect either. So please, let's together allow God to accelerate what he wants to do in this church and in our communities, in our neighborhoods. United together. How many are with me? I got six people with me. There's 10. There's 12. There's 15. Come on. How many are with me today? You're ready. You know God is moving us forward. And if God doesn't release you from this church, please don't go anywhere else. Please don't do that. Because I don't, I don't want you out of what God's will. Let's work together. <laughs> and see God do some great things. Some great things. Amen. What's the, another trial of today? Well, there's just more obstacles. There's just more obstacles. There's the Red Sea. You know, they're, they're delivered out of bondage. They're set free from slavery. And now a Red Sea. Now we're going to die here at the edge of the, this ocean. Basically, it's like an ocean. It's an impassable body of water. They didn't have a boat, Pastor Peter. What are we going to do? And... Never mind that the enemy is behind us with all of his forces. We are doomed to die. But God, come on somebody, say but God. But God parted the Red Sea and allowed them to cross over on dry land. There's the enemy's pursuit, another obstacle. There's heat beyond that. There's hunger beyond that. There's thirst beyond that. Even when finally Moses dies and Joshua is raised up as the new leader and they see God meet their need and meet their need and supply their need and, and cause the quail to come and cause the manna to come and cause the water to come out of the rock. Hallelujah. Remember, every obstacle is an opportunity. There was still another obstacle for Joshua and for God's people at that time. 
come to the Jordan River. Impassable, another impassable body of water. And God tells them, move forward. God parts the Jordan River. What's beyond the Jordan River? Another obstacle. There's Jericho just around the corner. A walled and fortified city. What does God say to His people? Come on, church, move forward. They obey God and they march around the city for seven days. Sometimes what God tells you to do might sound a little crazy to you. It might even be a little crazy to you. But move forward. What's beyond the fallen walls of Jericho? More obstacles. There's still giants that have to be defeated. But you know what? Can I just encourage somebody today? Rivers can still be parted. Walls can still fall down. And giants can still die. Move forward. Finally, we're always moving forward from our past through today. And we're moving forward to our future. Move forward to your fruitful future. Your future is bright. Your future is full of hope. Your future, you're liberated. You're not bound to drugs anymore. You're not, you're not smoking meth anymore. Come on, somebody. That's not for everybody in the room. I'm looking at Peter. That's his testimony. But God did a work. Peter is aggressively moving forward to his future. Man, I love it. We just talked today, right before church started. He's like, Pastor, I'm ready to get my license now. He's been certified for a couple of years, I think, now. Now he's at this level of getting licensed as an official pastor with the Assemblies of God. Man, I'm right with you. You tell me what I can do to help you. Because as you move forward, I'm going to move forward with you. As I move forward, you're going to move forward with me. And together, we're going to see God move this church forward. What does the future hold? Look what it held for them. The future was filled with God's promises. Let me quickly go through these as I close. God's promises, verse 13 and 14. God said to the people, fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to just be still and watch Him do it. What was God's promise to them? He promised peace. He promised salvation. He promised destruction of the enemy. He, he promised victory in the battle. God's promise. God's promises for you and for your family. Move forward toward God's promises. What's in the future? God's guidance. Verse 19. Then the angel of God who was going before them, the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And a pillar of cloud moved before them and stood behind them. They were guided by God supernaturally, by an angel, by a cloud by day, and by fire by night. God will guide us, church. He will guide you, I promise you that. Move forward into His guidance. When he says move forward, you're like, I don't, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. Take that first step and see what happens. Take that first step. They moved forward into God's deliverance. God's deliverance. Verse 22, and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground. If you have a pen or a highlighter, that's good to underline in your Bible. On dry ground. Didn't even have to wade through the mud, Sean so powerful. They moved forward on dry ground. The waters became a wall to them on their right and on their left. God delivered them. Yeah, but what about the enemy? They're, they're right behind us. They are so close behind us. They're breathing down our neck. Well, they moved forward into God's triumph. God's triumph. Let me keep on reading. Verse number 23. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them. 
into the midst of what was the sea because they now were on dry land as well. Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, his horsemen, his army in hot pursuit of God's people. And in the morning, watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and of cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into a panic. Oh, I like when God does that. Clogging the chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, let us flee before Israel for the Lord fights for them against us. Some of them had some actual sense right there. Verse 26, then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may come back down upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon the army, upon the horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned, covering the chariots, covering the horsemen of all the hosts of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Listen to this. Not one lived. Not one remained. Move forward into the future that God has for you. What else did they see in their future? They saw God's miracles. Miracle after miracle after miracle. Their clothing didn't wear out. Food was provided supernaturally. Water was provided supernaturally. God revealed himself as the God that heals every disease. They had a pillar of cloud by day. They had a pillar of fire by night. Angels appearing to them. Miracles. I just want to remind somebody today that God still does miracles. He still does miracles. Move forward into the miracle season that God has for you. Move forward finally into the land that God has for you. God's land. Ah. Can I just describe it to you? We find this in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 7 through 10. Deuteronomy 8, 7 through 10. For the Lord your God is bringing you into forward motion, church. Bringing you into a land, a good land. A land that has brooks of water, fountains, and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, a land of grapevines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and olive oil and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity. Anybody getting this? Abundance, provision, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper, rich minerals. And you shall eat and be full. You shall bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. What is our word for this year, church? Accelerate. Accelerate. 